Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Previously, I made videos on upgrading the CNC 3018. The CNC 3018 is the cheapest CNC machine in the world. I added a 500 watt spindle and it can now cut aluminum slowly with a quite acceptable result. Since the structure of the CNC 3018 is not rigid, especially as the x-axis moves a lot when working on metal, I want to get another mini desktop machine with a more rigid frame. I recently found this Comgrow Robo CNC engraver. It came with an aluminum frame, a larger diameter, 12mm linear rods on both the X and Y axes, 6 limit switches, a Z probe, an emergency stop button, and an offline controller. It seems that for $219, it's a pretty good deal. Today, I will assemble and review this Comgrow Robo CNC router. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. Here are all the parts. First, we have the Y-axis with the T-slot table. The X-axis and the Z-axis are pre-assembled. We have the spindle, the power supply, two sideboards, one backboard, the Z-probe, an offline controller, some tools, and a USB cable. If anyone has ever put a 3D printer together, this machine should be even easier than that. I will go through the assembly process really quickly. I will remove the protector from the acrylic boards, put some M5 bolts and T-nuts on two sideboards, and fix the backboard with two M5 bolts. Tighten the screws, but don't over-tighten them so you don't damage the acrylic. Then, slide in the sideboard so the T-slot will fix the board to the aluminum extrusion. Do the same to the other side. There is no front board, so now we can connect the gantry with the base. Align these three screw holes, insert three M5 screws, and tighten them. Do the same to the other side. Now we can put the spindle on the mount. Since the room is tight, I will use another screwdriver to expand the mount a little bit to slide in the spindle. Then, tighten the screw to fix it, but don't over-tighten it as the spindle mount is ABS. Then, we can connect some cables. First, we have the spindle power and the Z-limit switches, one on top and one at the bottom. At the back, we have the power switch and the emergency stop button. Then, we have the Y motor cable. On the side, we have the X motor cable. For the Y limit switches, this cable is connected to two limit switches underneath. We are almost done. If you want to use the Z probe, you can also connect it to the cable from the main board labeled as adjust. I normally adjust the machine manually, but I will connect it first. Next, connect the offline controller. We can copy G code to the SD card and use this controller to run the machine. There are also some rubber feet. Let's flip the machine over and install them. You may also connect the USB cable if you want to control this machine from the computer. The final one would be the power cord. I will also install one of the engraving bits that came with the machine. Okay, the assembly is now done. We can turn it on and see if everything is working. Once the machine is on, you will see three items on the screen. Move is to jog the machine. File is to load the G-code file, and you can also set the date and time inside the setting menu if you like. I will just jump directly to testing the axes and the spindle. You can move the X, Y, and Z using this controller, just like a gamepad direction key. The default scale is 1mm, so it will only move 1mm if you press the button. I will press the back button to change the scale to 10, so now the machine moves much faster. The OK button is for the spindle, and it's also working fine. OK, we can start doing some tests. I will clamp down a wood board for the first test. After our house recently installed new floors, I have some unused samples which are perfect for our test. Then, I will use Fusion 360 to type a few letters to do some engraving on this piece of wood. I have another series of Fusion 360 tutorials. I've covered some basic designs, and I put the links under the description. As we want to engrave the text and the outline, the depth of the cut would be 1mm. I will do multiple passes, 0.25mm each. Let's do a preview and see if this is what we want. OK, I can export the G-code file to the micro SD card. Select generic 3-axis machine and this is the Arduino GRBL controller. OK, 
we can start the job from the offline controller so we don't have to connect the machine to the computer. It starts working and it will do 0.25 millimeters for each pass. So you will see the first pass is just scratching lightly on the surface. It will go another 0.25 deeper for the second pass. Once all passes are finished, we can use a vacuum to clean it up and see how it looks. It actually looks pretty nice, but in fact, this is not my first try. I've already made two or three boards to find the perfect depth to cut with this kind of material. Next, I will try some acrylic boards. Since I don't want to damage the acrylic, I will use some blue tape and super glue to fix it on a board, and then clamp the board on the T-slot bed. I will jog the machine to the center of the acrylic plate and start the same G-code file. Okay, let's clean it up and see how it looks. I think I went too deep as I just ran four passes using the same G-code file on wood. I could do lighter engraving by doing just one pass on acrylic and it should look nicer. Next, I will try to make a bracket on a 3.5mm thick aluminum plate. I am sure this stock spindle can't cut aluminum that thick, but I will give it a try and see how far it can go. I will use Fusion 360 to make an angle bracket for the aluminum extrusion. It's a very simple shape with only six holes, so cut it out. I will set the height of the hole and make sure it will cut through. Then, run a contour operation to cut out the whole plate. Okay, let's export the files and start the G-code. I am using the flat end mill that came with this machine. It started to make the first hole. After a while, it had some problems. The spindle was overloaded and stopped, and the X, Y, and Z axes are still working, but as you can see, it actually removed some material. But I don't think it can go any deeper. I will stop it and change to a carbide cutter and see if it can go deeper. This is the dent that was previously made by the cutter that came with the machine, and this is our new carbide cutter. Let's try again and see what happens. The carbide end mill is sharper and it cuts deeper this time, but after a while, the spindle is still overloaded as it was not meant to cut aluminum this thick. However, the carbide is sharper and removes much more material than before. It almost cut through the 3.5 millimeter aluminum plate. I don't recommend you to try this as I know that the spindle is not supposed to handle jobs like this, but I was just curious to find out. I will keep this aluminum plate here, change it back to the engraving bit, and do some engraving. I have made some changes to the G-code file to engrave more lightly on this aluminum plate, and I will also run two passes.
it actually came out pretty nice. Finally, I will try to make the angle bracket on a 3mm thick acrylic plate. I will drill the same 6 holes and cut the whole part out. This time, the machine can drill through this acrylic plate easily. I will let it finish and we will see the result. This part is actually quite nice. The edge of the holes is smooth. Considering I'm using the end mills that came with the machine, the cut is still quite clean. This acrylic is about 3mm and the part is actually pretty usable. Okay, these are all the parts I made with this machine so far. Let's talk about what I think about this machine. First, this machine uses 12mm linear rods on both the X and Y axis, while a CNC 3018 uses 10mm rods. The working area is the same, but the x-axis also has a shorter length, so it's much more rigid than the CNC 3018 on both the x and the y-axis. Second, it came with many upgrades you would normally do after you bought a budget CNC. It came with 6 limit switches, 2 on each axis, and a z-probe to set the tool height. I don't use this probe at all, but it looks much nicer than my DIY ones. The offline controller is very useful. I can use the machine without connecting a USB cable to the computer, and I can jog it with the controller or manually move it to the starting position. Turn it on so the machine will set the current position as zero. I can run the G-code directly from the micro SD card in the offline controller. When not using it, just hang it at the back of the electronic enclosure. It's really convenient. Third, it came with adjusting knobs on the X and Y axis. It's quick to adjust the machine manually using the knob. For the Z axis, I can still rotate the lead screw to adjust the Z, but I prefer another knob on the Z axis, so fine-tuning the starting position would be even more convenient. Fourth, the machine came with sides and a backboard to keep most debris in this small area for easier cleanup. It didn't come with the front board for a few reasons. It would be easier to clamp the stock, change cutters, and maximize the working area without the front board. But I think a removable front board fixed with a magnet would be nicer, so we can remove it anytime we want, and it could do an even better job to keep the debris inside. Finally, I would suggest that ComGrow could provide more spindle options. As the machine is quite rigid compared to the ordinary CNC 3018, it should be capable of cutting aluminum or other soft metals with a more powerful spindle. The machine just came with a standard 60 watt 775 spindle. I think it would be nice if I can choose a 500 or 800 watt spindle with a matching spindle mount for an extra 80 to 100 dollars. Another good option is an aluminum enclosure with acrylic covers for another 80 to 100 dollars. This could make the machine work more quietly. In conclusion, I am happy with this machine. For beginners to buy their first budget desktop CNC router, I would recommend this $219 ComGrow Robo CNC over the cheapest CNC 3018. I have purchased another 800 watt spindle and may make more videos for the spindle upgrade and make some aluminum parts with this machine. If you are interested in this machine, I put the links and the discount code under this video. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.